holy shit. <laughs> holy shit is right. We, I mean, we all thought this was an anniversary screening, which I was excited for anyway, because I'm a loser. But <laughs> oh, it's nice. actually, but you it's have actually to be a loser to like this movie. Sorry, a nerd, a nerd. What you said that? loser. Well, I meant nerd. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's actually Hatcher Four, so we're really excited. I mean, just tell me everything. How did this come to pass? You know, how did you keep it secret for two years? Like, it's just nuts. Well, uh, it sort of all started when Wes Craven passed away. I was already going through a pretty rough time, and when Wes died, the, the realization that our idols aren't always going to be here became a reality. And as things go, a lot of people within the horror community started calling each other and texting, and you start thinking, like, well, what have we done of any significance? And it felt like the answer was nothing. And then uh, two months later, I wind up doing this panel with George Romero at Rock and Chalk in Worcester. And the whole time, he's speaking to me like I'm a fellow filmmaker, and he's referencing my films. And it, it was very uh, moving. And then afterwards, he had taken me aside, and he said, I know you've been going through a hard time. I know you're taking Wes's passing personally. You, you've got to be able to see that what you do matters. I mean, look, think about Hatchet. Like, look at all these fans. Like, when are you going to give these kids another Crowley picture? because everybody's kids to George and movies are pictures. And um, I was like, I'm, I'm done, I, I'm not going to. And he was like, you, we need it. Like we need to laugh and they, they, until you realize that it's not only yours anymore, it's bigger than that, you're never gonna fully be able to appreciate it. And he's like, they need this. And I mean, when George Romero tells you to do something, you do it. And uh, it was a turning point because it really made me fall in love with the thing I created again because I had really lost sight of that I think all I could see was failure just because of the place I was in and uh, the whole plan was that when we did the unveiling a few nights ago he was supposed to be there and I was gonna be able to publicly thank him and tell him what he did and we missed it by 37 days which is sad but uh, I'm sure he was there in spirit and uh, but yeah it was really it was that it was it was losing two of the greatest and then being like well you know what the, this is my thing and wherever it stands in the test of time it's it's mine and um and I fell in love with it again and it was great to do but to keep it a surprise for everybody was was huge and the way we did that was literally just you know everybody signed NDAs but that only goes so far when you have a crew of 100 people but I would sit down with every single crew person and explain who the fans are of this. I would show them uh, fan mail from uh, soldiers, burn victims, disabled people, and be like, this is who we're doing this for. And this, it might not change the world, but for these people, it's gonna bring so much joy. And so if you go shoot your mouth off just to be cool, think about what you're taking away from them. And it worked, and nobody spilled. There was one person, one person, a day player, went and shot his mouth off on another set, but I was able to squash that. But uh, but yeah, it, it never got out, which was a shock. Like right up until the moment I said it, I was still like, oh my God, someone's gonna ruin this. And when I said it and the whole theater just stood, I mean, there were people crying in the audience and George, George was right. Um, you've been very vocal about the fact it's not a reboot, it's a sequel. So where is, I mean, we thought Victor Crowley was dead, so where is Victor Crowley at 10 years later? Well, that's what you're going to find out in the movie. That's right. You have to go see it. Yes. But the the first three films take place over the same weekend. Of course, yeah. And then this is 10 years after that. So uh, I think because in one of the press releases it said this uh, reboots with a new storyline, people focus on the word reboot. And all of a sudden the next day people are like, you remade Hatchet? You re I'm like, what, what are you talking about? But then you read their description and it's like, clearly that is not what this is. So, you know, you can never win with the media, but, um, but yeah, no, it's not, it's not a reboot. Um, what does playing Victor Crowley mean to you? Uh, well, it, it gave me a whole new career when I thought I was done in the horror business being the main guy, Adam came along and let me uh, start all over again. Uh, you know, I had been replaced as Jason, so he gave me a character that gave me a whole new lease on the horror community so uh, I love playing the character and every time he tells me we're going to do another one I'm like uh, good I'm ready and this I, I really thought when he said he's going to keep it secret I thought to myself I, that's a nice thought but it's not going to happen somebody is going to ruin it 
And sure enough, it, they didn't. And, and I'm still amazed that everybody that was involved, because some of the crew is people that we didn't really know yeah, there were some from new, past. New people in this and group. that makes you a little concerned if it's past crew members that have been through the process and everything, they typically have more respect for it. But the, all these new people were great. And it was so cool when Adam actually announced what it was yeah. to see the reaction of the audience because I was there I had to be there I was I was coming here that day originally and then when Adam said we're going to do this I said okay well I have to change my flight because I got to be there just very quickly uh, what can you tell us about this Holliston documentary that was just announced today well I mean it's it's still in the very early stages but uh, after seeing the documentary they did about Kane uh, and, and then them bringing it up, I was much more open to it. But it's, uh, I mean, it's gonna be a long process, so I, I don't expect anybody to be seeing anything anytime too soon. But it, it's, a, it's a great story because it's, what's great about Kane's story and why I want people to see that documentary so badly is that it's not just about Kane, the celebrity, the horror guy, the guy who played Jason and Victor. It's a story about taking chances, not giving up, overcoming, that everybody needs to hear, from the bullying to the burn. And Holliston, in its own way, is this, like, geek version of Rocky, like, this kid that just, all I ever, like, and no offense to Hatchet or any of this stuff, that's, Holliston was all I ever wanted to do. And it took 13 years of almost until it finally happened, and then right when it was hitting, we got hit with the worst tragedies, and, uh, but we're still going to keep going. So it, it, was, it wasn't the easiest thing to say yes to because there's a lot of stuff I have not shared yet that I, I'm worried about sharing for what I went through. But, um, but after seeing what he did, I, I have a little bit more confidence in, in doing that. Well, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.